So what about our understanding of PSE and IBD? So I'm not, not going to give a, a detailed basic science lecture, but we've made really good strides about trying to understand why PSE occurs in people with colitis. So let's talk about the gut bacteria. So we've all got gut bacteria, good and bad bacteria, and there are more bacteria in your bowels than there are in the human population of Earth's million times over. All right? If you ignore the text on this side, what you see in patients with PSC and colitis, these blue dots, there are very different species compared to those with inflammatory bowel disease alone and those people who don't have either condition. So there are differences. But there are differences if you look at PSC patients from Calgary in Canada and patients in Birmingham and patients in Oslo. It's not the fact that there is a one specific type of gut bacteria linked to PSC. But in any given population, the PSC bowel, you know, bowel bugs will be different to healthy control bowel bugs. And there's a really neat but slightly horrific study that I'm going to talk about now. <laughs> so, so the, I mean, this is sort of human centipede type of, you know, sort of, um, 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 uh, um, sort of uh, disgusting. This. So, the, I mean, the letters aren't important, but the top row are called germ-free mice. These are mice who've got uh, no bugs in their bowel at all. They're quite, and they're relatively healthy. And if you give stool, so you actually take poo from these mice and you give that poo to, to sort of, uh, uh, um, for, uh, for healthy control to mice who have no bug bacteria of their own, compared to poo samples from patients with patients with PSC to the same mice, what happens? Well, you can actually give PSC to a normal mouse by giving the poo from a patient with PSC to it. So you're actually transferring disease purely through gut bacteria. So what we're now trying to do here in other parts of the world is seeing whether we can actually change your bugs by giving you the poo from a patient who's healthy. <laughs> you don't have to swallow it, don't worry. <laughs> 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 but in a colonoscopy, where your bowel's all clear, if we can actually transplant... I mean, we do, we do liver transplants. If we can do a poo transplant <laughs> and get rid of your PSC, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Well, we don't know. We try, we're trying that as well. But it's, but, it's, but it's an avenue that's led way for further research because if we can induce PSE by giving purely from stool, in, sort of into, in a mouse, but uh, from, a, from a PSE patient, does a reverse hold true? So those experiments are now ongoing where we're going to try to take away PSE in these mice by clearing, clearing the gut flora again and, and seeing whether we can give the, see that we, we can repair damage that's already been set up. <laughs> Sorry. There are active trials in colitis alone, um, because the same thing holds true in colitis models. You can give mice colitis, you can give humans, uh, and actually there is some success of getting rid of colitis itself. So there are some trials that have started, but at the moment they're purely at the safety stage, just to ensure that people are safe. And not, of course there are different stages of PSC, and it's at what stage do you target. So once we've cracked the colitis side and the early PSC stage, then yes, we'll move to that latest, where, we, where we'll take all comers. Now, again, it's, uh, it's purely at the safety stage, so I think in the world with PSC, I mean, I mean Marty may know more about this than me, but certainly the world, I think there are about 20 patients who have been in a trial with PSC, specifically looking at the PSC and faecal transplantation. And there are some mixed results because... In mice, this was a cage, they're, they're all given, told what to eat and everything else. I mean, but in humans, you, know, you can't control what humans do. Uh, um, and so it's a bit, it's, it's a little, there are a lot more factors at play. But yes, there are, there are some trials that have just started, but they're at a very early stage. Uh, and uh, in the UK, in our unit here, we are doing trials for colitis, which includes individuals with PSC as well. But the main end point as if it were is to see if colitis improves and as a secondary measure we're looking to see if the PSC improves but yes that is something that's ongoing is that the stop colitis yes and we're doing a stop and we're doing a stop pouchitis one as well are they recruiting they are still recruiting and it's people with active colitis yet yeah, still recruiting and stop pouchitis will start, start soon too right so the other avenue that's sort of that's had great strides, and actually it's from here from from one of my mentors, David Adams, who's the dean of our med school now, who 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 um, pro, probed a hypothesis wherein 
what if the signals that call immune cells to the gut and the signals that call immune cells to the liver in patients with PNC and colitis are the same? And he's right. In the liver, we see a certain postal code of molecules. The names aren't really that important, but we see certain signals that recruit immune cells to, to, which cause inflammation. And those same immune cells are expressed in the liver of individuals with PSC. And we're now starting to do clinical trials where we target this particular access. So giving an, a particular target that would improve colitis and improve liver injury.